NASCAR Sprint Cup action here presented by Old Spice, Long Pond, Pennsylvania, Pocono Raceway under caution for the second time today. A tire coming off the right rear of the 98 car. And why don't we, while we have a break, why don't we speak with our in-race reporter, Carl Edwards. Hey, Carl, Dale Jarrett, ESPN, you got me? I got you, Dale. Well, you've had a little time now, 50-some laps to uh, evaluate this thing. How's your car and how's the track? The car is okay. Uh, the track is uh, it's pretty slick. It's pretty free. So we're working on you know keeping grip in the car and uh, hopefully this last adjustment Bob's Bob's got her uh, fixed up. It seems like uh, we're pretty competitive, but I just I, you know you know how it is. You mess up a corner and you just give up so much. So just right now saw on the wheel a little bit and hopefully we can get some more grip in this athletic fusion. Hey, just watching it looks like the bottom of turn one almost impossible to make a pass there. Yeah, I've tried that a couple times and it's really not been good. So I'm going to start here on the outside and, uh, you know, we'll see how it works. But those first laps, the tires got so much grip that you just feel like you're he-man. You can go in there and uh, make something happen. It's not always the case. All right, thanks, Carl. Good luck. While you guys were talking, these guys were racing on the racetrack. Uh, these are the wave around cars now that were at the tail end of the lead lap in front of Denny Hamlin. Uh, they got the wave around at the start finish line when they get the one to go. Uh, the leaders are over there in the short shoot coming to turn three, coming to the green. So these guys have to really hustle to catch up. Two and a half miles around here. They'll have an extra lap or two on their tires now uh, when they get the green. Yeah, they're going to make it. They're going into the tunnel turn right now. So they're going to get to the end of the pack. Now, back in June, the wave around cars were able to stay on the racetrack and pit a couple laps later and still stay on the lead lap. So it was a big, big break for the guys on the wave around. Pace car getting ready to pull in. Why don't we listen to the spotters as we get set for the restart as we go full throttle. Hey, be ready here. Be ready. 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 Go and free go. Free go. Free go. Free go. Free go. Inside the nine, inside. Looking inside. inside. He's clear. 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 Still out there. Still going to be out. Great scramble back here from about seventh on back. The 42 car, Juan Pablo Montoya, seventh. Casey Kane, there's the 18 car of Kyle Busch. These guys were three wide coming off turn one a moment ago. Man, you see a lot of jockeying for position on these double final restarts. Yeah, we heard Carl Evans just say the tires have so much grip at the start. These guys are trying to make the most of that and get as many spots as they possibly can. That's got to be a hard adjustment because they, these cars had fell off three seconds a lap before they made that pit stop. And now you got to go back green right now with a lot more grip. Is that hard to adjust to? Yeah, it is because you can drive the car so much harder. You can get down into the corner. You can pick the gas up sooner. So your mindset totally changes. And then as this run goes on, you have to really make an adjustment then too to go back to letting off a little sooner and being a little easier with the throttle. NASCAR has given the 11 car a warning. Oh, right side of your screen, hard braking by the 83 car there of Brian Vickers to keep from running all over the back of Greg Biffle. I mentioned the 11 car getting a warning. NASCAR said you got to stay in line on the restart all the way to the green flag. Yeah, I didn't see exactly when he moved, but he did change lanes right there, right as the green came out. Great action here. Casey Kane in the eight car, and the nine car in eighth position. Mark Martin behind him in ninth. There's the 83. We saw him lock up the brakes, the left front, getting into turn three. He was trying to really make a pass going in there. In these cars, you have to be extremely careful with the brake. It's easy to lock that up. I'd be concerned about that left front tire if it slid a little bit, Andy. Yeah, it looked like it didn't slide quite enough to hurt it too much. But if you do that more than once, uh, it'll find that flat spot again. If you try to do that real hard braking, uh, it'll find that flat spot again. And then you get some real problems with that, with the vibration and uh, possibly a tire actually failing on you. Kane now taking the seventh spot away from Newman. Newman eighth, then Mark Martin ninth. Kyle Busch is tenth. Behind them, Biffle, Vickers, and Rudeman, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Look how long the racetrack. Uh, look how long the racetrack Brian Vickers is running through turn three. Here comes Mark. 
He's going to get down here to turn one, though. Let's see if he's able to complete this pass before he gets there. Yeah, he's able to really do that. Now he's going to be able to slide up in front of Ryan Newman, who gave him a little bit of room. You can see the 18 car, a little bit of smoke there. Looks like maybe he's got a little issue here on low air pressure with the splitter hitting on um, those bumps. That's what you see. That smoke is where the car's bottoming out uh, in those bumps. And these speeds are so much higher and the, and the tires being low that you get a little more of that at this point than you would after they run a few laps. Whoa, look at Newman. Now Ryan Newman has lost two positions and a lap and a half on the racetrack and is in jeopardy of losing more behind him. Biffle. Now here comes Vickers back yeah. on the inside of Bush. He keeps trying to make that bottom work here. This that's, again, that used to be the way everybody ran around here. But uh, Brian Vickers trying to make a pass there. Jamie. Well, things are working out well on the track for Brian Vickers. He said that he's found some new lines that are working. The trouble is. track. Sure makes it tough here to try to make up that many spots. But Brian Vickers got a great handling car and he is running a different line than most of these cars. So he won't have much trouble passing cars if he uh, if he's fast enough. He's got the line. Yeah. Nothing better than get the driver a little more pumped up for a couple of bad pit stops. So. <laughs> this has been the best track for Red Bull. They have their best finish uh, for this team second here. Vickers has finished second twice. In fact, he's led 120 laps here in the past. Okay, we've got a piece of the caution light that's blown off. We talked about this yesterday, that these cars make so much turbulent air when they go by. Uh, this is not the first time. This is more than, more than two or three times we've seen this happen. Well, see this. here, that, right there's a piece of that caution light. These tracks are going to have to start reinforcing these lights because these cars really do put a lot of wind out there. And you wonder why when these guys get up close to another car, it's hard to pass. Well, they're right there <laughs> telling you. Yeah. I mean, the air is moving around so much. And these guys tell me that, and knowing from when I drove these cars when they first started with them, that these cars just move around a whole lot. But you can see just how much air uh, is affected around these cars, and especially as they're in a big group after a restart. Now, a big break here for Paul Menard. He will get the free pass and be able to get around and get back on the lead lap. He had lost a lap by cutting a right rear tire, bringing out the caution flag because the carcass of the tire on the racetrack and having to come down pit road. Vince. Well, it's been a really tough day on that 98 team. Their front tire changer, or front tire uh, carrier, I should say, Alan Troutman, suffered a hand injury on their very first stop. And then you mentioned that tire going down. And Paul Menard had just radioed in seconds before it, that he thinks he's got a tire going down, and all of a sudden, it went. So it's been a tough way to uh, get the day started for the 98. And, boy, you guys know it. This is a tough place to have a tough day. Huh? Well, it can be a long day here sometimes, especially when you got a loose race car. It's going to be a long day anyway. 500 miles yeah. around here is Even a long a good time. Car. Yeah, and so you start having problems, but hopefully this will be the start of their day turning around. There's Tony Stewart talking about someone having a long day. Uh, he had a great day here back in June from the back of the pack all the way to victory. And right now, Tony Stewart is struggling with the handling of the car, has already made a pit stop early on lap 13 for a tire situation. He is in 34th position. He is the next to the last car right now on the lead lap. You see Johnson, Gordon, Edwards. We look for these cars to make a pit stop. I know uh, as much as these tires are falling off that if, uh, if these leaders come down and you, and you don't, you could get called out big time. Looks like Denny Hamlin's going to stay out. This is going to be an opportunity. You see some cars ducking down back here now. This is going to be an opportunity for these guys. Here we go. You see Rudiman making a late decision. This is going to pay off for these guys right here. The highest running car was David Rudiman. He's 13th coming down pit road. Kenseth is there. David Reagan. There is Rudiman. The double zero has really been a, a breakout season for him. Jamie. And David Rudiman already down and away in his pit box. Same car he finished third with. So far, so good. Been a little tight today so far, guys. The 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's been battling a condition of a loose race car most of the day today. Hasn't been terrible, but it's loose. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Dave? Tony Stewart's crew still working on this car. Chassis adjustment in the right side there. They will take on four tires. They're also going to put a spring rubber into the right rear. The car was tight. So they go from being very loose and having a hard time hanging on to it to uh, being too tight. Cars from 17th on back came on the pit road. Back with a restart.